What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 13th chemistry tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking to you guys about valence electrons and also isotopes. Maybe something else if I have time, I really don't know yet. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is valence electrons. Now valence electrons are electrons on the outermost energy level. So why do we even need to know about valence electrons? It seems kind of useless to give you know kind of them a random name. Well whenever you have a chemical reaction that takes place elements usually lose or gain electrons so let me go ahead and draw a simple element I'll draw carbon now carbon has six protons and it has six electrons most of the time so let me go ahead and we'll just go ahead and assume that six protons are in that nucleus now the electrons are two on the first energy level and four on the second energy level. Now these electrons out here on the outermost energy level are called valence electrons. Now remember, these are all negatively charged particles and the nucleus is positively charged. There's a bunch of protons in there. So there's always an attraction between these electrons and the nucleus. However, the farther away you go, the less attraction there is or the less force. So whenever you have a chemical reaction that takes place, the farthest ones away are the first to go because they have less of an attraction than these ones right here. And again, that is basically what valence electrons are. The electrons on the outermost energy level. That's all you need to know. So now that we understand what valence electrons are and how they are either lost or gained in chemical reactions, we can now move on to the next topic, which is isotopes. Now you might have heard of isotopes before, but if you haven't, I'll go ahead and give you a quick review. So before I even start, I guess I might as well mention this. I know we didn't go over the periodic table yet, but you probably gathered by now that elements are defined by the number of protons in them. For example, if an element has one proton, we call it hydrogen. Any element with two protons, we call helium and they each have a designated symbol and whenever we're looking at the periodic table we're gonna see all about this so basically just remember this elements are defined by the number of protons they possess however sometimes you can have elements with the same number of protons but different amounts of neutrons whenever this happens we call these elements isotopes so for example whenever we're looking at carbon we take the entire mass number, which is 12, and how many protons it has. Carbon always has six protons. So that's why we write it like this. Now, if we subtract the entire mass, or excuse me, the number of protons from the entire mass, we get six. So carbon 12 has six neutrons because protons plus neutrons equal mass. However, you also have something like carbon 14. Now carbon-14 is the entire mass, 14. However, like I said, carbon always has six protons. So if you take 14 minus six, you get eight. So carbon-14 has eight neutrons, six protons for an entire mass of 14. So carbon-12 and carbon-14 would be called isotopes. The definition is different forms of a single element. Basically, whenever you have an element with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons, they're called isotopes. Again, one last time, different forms of the same element. So both of these have six protons, but one has six neutrons, and the other has eight neutrons in the nucleus. So there you go, you now know about isotopes and also valence electrons. In the next tutorial we're going to be covering ions and then be getting into the periodic table and it is going to be a blast. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.